mesmerising and mighty, the Matildas have enthralled the nation and the world. The World Cup always gives a, a, a showcase every four years for us to see the best women's footballers on the planet and see what they're capable of doing. And that's exactly what's happened here. From the spot, she sends it straight up through. It's a trailblazing moment for women's sports, with the Matildas using their superstar status to push for equal pay in the world game. Even before the World Cup began, the Matildas raised their voices in a social media campaign. Those that came before us showed that being a Matilda means something. They showed us how to fight for recognition, validation and respect. Collective bargaining has allowed us to ensure we now get the same conditions as the Socceroos. The Matildas are the first women's team in the world to be paid the same as their male counterparts, the Socceroos, under a hard-fought deal between the Players' Union and Football Australia in 2019. This new deal is enormous. As a female footballer, um, it's kind of what we've always dreamed of. Around the world, other women players are still fighting for equal conditions. Canada entered the World Cup amid an equal pay dispute, while some Nigerian players say they haven't been paid for two years. Treating men and women equally as sports people sends a really important message that their participation is just as valued, their labour is just as valued. Dot is a soccer fanatic. She started playing 10 years ago and wants to play at the highest level. Moya Dodd played for the Matildas in the 1980s and 90s and witnessed soccer's evolution on the world stage. When I played, uh, we were never paid. Actually, we had to pay uh, some of our own costs, airfares and accommodation. It wasn't just the pay that was unequal, it was really everything. It was the access you had to facilities, it was uh, what was invested in coaching, in medical support. Uh, I mean, many of my peers and, and I, you know, if we got an injury, then we would be paying for our own rehab. Moya Dodd later served on the board of Football Australia and FIFA's executive committee. I would always like to see FIFA and other governing bodies doing more. Um, FIFA is very well resourced. Um, it has the ability to make vast change. And, uh, you know, I think we're on a path to progress. I would say we're not there yet. The disparity in World Cup prize money is glaring. 440 million US dollars for men, 110 million for women. The Matildas have been quick to call it out. FIFA will still only offer women one quarter as much prize money as men for the same achievement. Women are going to earn a quarter of what the men earned for the uh, Qatar World Cup, which is just, I mean, that's just straight up gender um, discrimination. The FIFA top brass have been under pressure to explain. Money is obviously always uh, a sensitive issue, uh, a sensitive argument. Let me just say that I'm, uh, uh, I'm pretty happy that uh, before I became FIFA president, the, the whole envelope for the prize money was 15 million, now it's 150 million. FIFA has a reserve of $4 billion. So if it wanted to at the moment, it could equalise prize money today. They definitely need to close that gap because otherwise the, the women's game, especially in Australia, won't keep developing. The path to greatness begins at the domestic level in A-League soccer, where many of the Matildas started out. Central Coast Mariners goalkeeper Sarah Langman hopes to one day play for the World Cup. One minute I was a field player, next minute I was a goalkeeper, back in under 15s. But like many women A-League players, Sarah also juggles a day job. It's a bit hard, like if you're paying for rent and food and kind of, especially like petrol as well, um, it's just not kind of a livable income, especially for a professional soccer player. Women will earn less than men because their season is shorter. Men are contracted for 52 weeks a year, women 35 weeks. A lot of my energy is going into, you know, me having to go to work. Whereas, like, if we got paid similar or even same to the men, I probably can put 100% commitment into the sport. The A-League is pushing for more funding from the federal government to improve conditions for women, including extending the season.
We can't do it alone. You know, it shouldn't sit the responsibility of 12 individual privately held owners to fund the development pathway for women's football. Because at the moment, there's a hell of a lot of euphoria about women's football and the professional game here in Australia at the moment is not making a cent. The A-League also wants a boost in the payments paid by FIFA to clubs used to develop stars, known as club benefits. The difference is stark. 209 million for men, compared to 11.5 million for women. We would love that, that club benefit scheme to increase. That will allow us to continue to reinvest that back in getting ourselves closer to that 52-week contract for, for these talented athletes. The A-League will be hoping the Matildas' magic rubs off on local competition as it gears up for the season in October. Younger players need a, you know, a stepping stone and I think closing that gap will definitely help the future of football in Australia.